Welcome to our 11th video with data structures and algorithms. We're going to talk about time complexities. We're going to start off with um, iterative uh, algorithms like we have here, like loops. And um, we'll then go on to talk about um, uh, the same thing with recursion and, and so on. So let's just start with this example. And from previous videos, you know that we'll start by counting how many times each one of these things runs. So this one runs one time, right? And how many times does our while loop run? Well, if we check our i variable here, the first is e equals n. And then we decrement and it equals n minus 1. Do it again, n minus 2, dot, 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 so on, right? 2, 1, 1 is OK. So we do it again, we get 0. So how many times did we uh, decrement? We did decrement it n times, right? So there's that. That tells us right there. That was n times. If that's n times, this one in here is also n times. Right, but we also had this plus 1 out here so that we could break out of the loop. So here, right, we have n plus 1. Now, let's erase this. And let's actually calculate our time complexity. Now, usually, we will use t of n, right, to denote our time complexity. And here, typically, we have some sort of a constant. Uh, I'm just going to write a1 a times 1 plus a2 times n plus 1 plus a3. And actually, I'm just going to combine these. 2a3 times n. Right, we have two of those. And then we continue with our algebra. So we have a1 plus a2, and this is times n, plus a2 plus 2a3 times n. And if we combine these, right, or group these together, we have a2 plus 2a3, this will be times n here, plus we have a1 plus a2, right, our n is there. We can see that these are just constants. And thus t of n is a linear time uh, algorithm. Let's do another example. Almost the same one, except uh, this time we have we're dividing by two. So this runs one time. And here let's check i. i is equal to n, and it's equal to n over two, and n over four, and n over eight, and so on until we get n over n, and one is okay. So here i will be less than. 1. Okay, so we'll break out of the loop here. And somehow we have to count how many times we divided by n. So a little trick is to use uh, logarithms, but we're just going to visualize it here. If we have n, and we continually divide by 2, we end up with kind of a binary tree structure, if you've seen this before. And we'll go on and on all the way down until we get 1 across the board. And one way that we can count this is that this is log base 2 of n. That's how many times we divided n by 2. Now, just a little review of logarithms, right? If we have 2 to the k is equal to n, we know that log base 2 of n is equal to k, right? We multiply uh, k, or we multiply 2 um, k times, and we get n. That's kind of like going back up this structure here. 
So if we have if we start off with ones, we multiply that by two, multiply by two, multiply by two. Right here we multiplied a number four by two. Right, we get a number two. Multiply that by two, we get n. So it's the other way around. So this right here is log n, right? Log base two of n. But this does not include this, and it does not include this, obviously. So we have to add one and add one. So this runs log base two of n plus two times. And same thing with in here, but this is one less time, as we know. So if I just get rid of all this, we can begin to calculate this time complexity. And just get rid of that. There we go. So now we have constants, right? A1 in front of this times 1, so we don't need to put that. Then we have A2 times, and we've got log base 2 of n plus 2 plus 2A3 times right, log base 2 of n plus 1. So you can kind of see where we're going with this by now. But we've got a1 plus a2 log base 2 of n plus 2a2 plus 2a3 times log base 2 of n and then plus 2a3. And when we, um, when we combine these things, we get a2 plus 2a3 times log base 2 of n plus, and then all of our other constants, right? a1 plus 2a2 and so on. It's an a. And just as in the last one, we have a couple of constants, right? So we can clearly see that t of n um, is on the order of log n, log base 2 of n. Let's do one more example. <coughs> this time we have a nested loop. And let's do what we've done this whole time. So we know that i, right, goes from 1. And we're adding 1 each time. Oops, that's a 3. 4 all the way up until is equal to n and then n plus 1, right? Because we have to break out. So there's an easy one, n plus 1. Get rid of that. Everything directly within is 1 less. So that's just n. And now uh, we have a, a new one. We have a, a while loop. So we start off with j equal to 1. And this time we're multiplying it by 2. So this would be 2, right? And then 4, 8, and so on until we get to n. And n is okay still, right? We multiply by 2 again. We get 2n. So kind of the same thing, right, in here. How many times did we multiply by 2? Well, again, if you take our example we have n right and actually let's do it the other way right we have one and then we have two and then we have four and then we have eight okay and so on until we get to n, and this you can see that this is just the the reverse, right, of of our little depiction of how many times we divided by two, right, n over two, n over two, and so on. 
So this is easy enough. This one here is right, log of n plus 1, right? Plus our last one. And then we have one more. So <coughs> again, we have log n plus 1 plus 1, which is plus 2. And again, everything directly inside a loop is 1 less. So we have this, right? But we've forgotten about one important detail, and that is that this while loop is actually within the for loop. So we just calculated how many times this while loop will run by itself, but now we actually have to loop that, right? So you can see that this one runs n times. So all of these also um, get that added to it or multiplied to it. So if we just plug these things in as we've done, t of n, we have some constant here, right, times n plus 1, plus some other constant times n, plus some other constant times n times log base 2 of n plus 2, right, plus some other constant times 2, right, of these. But again, I'm trying to make a point that these are just constants. This is what we really want to look at. We have n log base 2 of n plus 1. Okay, and again, constant, 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 right? There are two of these, but two is also a constant. So now if we look at this, we can definitely see that we have an n term here. We have obviously a constant term, right? Some constant term here. Um, and this is also, right, there's another constant in front of this. Here's a constant. What we really want to see is here we have n log base 2 of n there, n log base 2 of n there. Again, constants, constants. So if we continue on, we can definitely see Right, this is our highest order term out of all of these. We're kind of skipping some steps here, but you can do the algebra if you want to um, try and do that. We know that t of n is on the order of n log n in this case. So uh, we just did these with iterations. Next, let's do these with uh, recursion.